governance call. Welcome everyone uh, to our governance call number nine. My name is Orhan and I am one of the governance facilitators. And um, we have a packed agenda today and a lot of interesting things we have to go through and a lot of new initiatives. So uh, I will go through the agenda in just a second. Just wanted to say before we start to uh, all of you both new people and people who have been here before, just always feel free to ask questions at any time in the, during the call, whether you write it in the chat or you wanna speak it out loud, feel free to do it. We welcome all sorts of questions here, interesting questions, intriguing questions and critical questions. Don't feel afraid to ask your questions. There's no such things as stupid questions. As long as it's related to the topic, it's not stupid. So please go ahead and ask your questions whenever you have them. So just wanted to get that out of the way. And um, the agenda for today is uh, we will have uh, Lucas to uh, talk a little bit about the vision for the decentralization of centrifuge. And then we will have a governance update uh, where we go through what has happened since the last call and what's ongoing and what is ahead of us. And then we have a very interesting part as well, which is the pop version two that Colin will talk a little bit about. And for those of you who are not familiar with the pop, it's the pool onboarding proposal process, which is how pools are going to launch on centrifuge chain. So this is the version two we will be covering today. Then we have uh, 10 leg rewards, and we have some news about the centrifuge and Altair collators. And lastly, there are some information about how we're going to use SubSquare and OpenSquare in our governance. So that's the agenda for today. And um, as I said before, feel free if you want anything clarified or if you have any comments or any questions, feel free to do it. So. If Lucas is with us here now, we can kick it off with the first point on the agenda, the vision for the decentralization of centrifuge. Are you with us, Lucas? Yes, I am. I, I, I am. I'm on my, uh, on my device. It does not support screen sharing, so I, I can't share the slides, but maybe Kate is going to. Yeah, OK, if you want to go, just go to the next slide, that's good. Um, actually, so so we did a, a a a lot of this is actually coming from our event we did together with the maker community where we talked a bit about what the vision of of like maker and centrifuge in the future could look like where we're going, and I I kind of wanted to share like maybe a, a abbreviated version here. Um, to to kind of also give give uh, give a bit of context to the community and like maybe use that as a as a as a point to start a discussion around it and and, and fill in some of the inspire some of uh, hopefully a lot of you everyone here to to kind of like come together around around what we want to achieve um, yeah so what like like going like starting at the very beginning right like why are we in crypto what are we doing here like why do we get up every morning and kind of like work in this crazy um crazy industry um and and actually for me now it's been five years that i've been working on centrifuge um it's because i think fundamentally right like we want to fix what is a very broken system and this broken system i'm talking about is finance right and this idea or, or this 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 goal to fix a financial system it goes as far goes back as far as the bitcoin paper right um bitcoin actually the genesis block um included this headline from uh the times about the financial crisis in 2008 9 right it was kind of like a very clear reference to the fact that well like the banks have failed us so how do we build a system where we don't rely on banks that that might fail us again um, and and 
right? Sort of based on that, and Ethereum came, and and, and DeFi came, and and actually DeFi, I think, is able to deliver on a lot of what I think Bitcoin kind of like tried to start off, right? If you think of um, the world today, uh, if I have money and I put it in my bank account, uh, I make almost no interest, right? Um, but if I actually then want to borrow, maybe one to, may have one to maybe at most absolutely like two and a half percent probably. Now my rates are going up now, but it, very little, right? If I want to borrow money from a bank though, like it's immediately a couple percent. Like so, a lot of times, like if, if I'm a small business, I'm borrowing at like 10, 15 percent a year. So like you wonder, okay, like where's where where's the money going in between, right? Um, and I think like oh, the financial system over the last hundred years kind of like turn into this uh, collection of, of intermediaries that uh, instead of actually providing a valuable service, which is maybe why they started, um, they're now mostly just trying to ensure that they can extract the most amount of fees, right? And so you have, of the interest I'm paying, I'm paying mostly interest to the investment banks, the trust transfer agents, fund managers, placement agents, calculation, calculation agents, uh, more lawyers and another investment advisor and, uh, and uh, maybe like some underwriter, right? Kind of like all, all these people, they're all taking like here five base 0.05%, 0.5%. And in the end, um, well, like with the lender, right, it's like ends up like on my on the on the bank account that you deposit your money and like you actually end up with almost no interest at all. Um, right. And, and, and if you think of like DeFi, right, the idea is to actually build um, a system without all these intermediaries, a system that's governed by code as opposed to kind of like a, an institution that that may be like X. Uh, tries to just leverage their position of power to actually protect uh, their their share, the, the fee that they're taking, right? Extracting the rent. Um, but instead, actually, we have this open system that anyone can improve, that anyone can kind of like view, audit. And if the system fails us, right, then what we do is we fork it. And we say, well, like, this mechanism is clearly dumb, but maybe there's a good idea here. Let's try to fork it and build a new one, right? And that's what's been driving crypto uh, over the last years, right? And and it's also and, and it keeps us honest. It makes sure that like we build the best protocols possible, and anyone can use them. And if they're not good, and someone builds an alternative, then they can move on. Um, and so and maybe if you want to go to the next slide. Um, so right, like we're that's that's what's happening. But also right, like real world, like like talking about real world assets um, and, and now bringing those into the picture. Well, like if we're just building this kind of DeFi um, ecosystem to use with ETH and Maker and Uni, Uni tokens and, and Shiba Inu and whatnot, right? We're not really building a financial system that impacts the real world. Like we're building a system that like maybe the few lucky ones that participated in DeFi summer 2020 and got a bunch of tokens, um, like now are able to play in, but we're not actually solving some of these problems, right? Um, and that's why, like actually what we need to do to make DeFi successful and deliver on this is we need to bring real world assets into DeFi. And really what, what this means, right? Like real world assets, it sounds like something, but it just means like we're, we need to make sure that DeFi can be used for any asset, not just crypto native assets, because the real world is right, just everything that exists around, um, around the small world that is crypto today. Now, now, crypt, now real world assets, they, like, they also come with other benefits, right? Because as we know, like crypto is extremely volatile today. And a lot, and, and the big reason for that is because, well, like it's, there's, the system is not diverse enough, right? And so I think real world assets actually have the potential to bring stable yields, uh, safe assets, and ultimately, massive amounts of growth right because as we know crypto is very small a very small fraction today and if we can actually grow this to to like the, the the whole world we're starting to measure tvl and assets not in billions but actually in trillions um so maybe going on going to the next slide um right and that's like kind of like the the thing we need to keep in mind is like we we need to um 
actually bring these real world assets on chain because there's really no other way to grow DeFi today. Um, sure, we can hope that more more DeFi native assets will come and they'll grow over time as as um, as maybe use of of crypto native tools right grows. But really, um, the leverage and kind of like delivering on on this on this vision of of uh, solving actually real problems of the financial system, right? It can only work if we bring uh, these real assets on chain. And with that, actually, we're growing DeFi as a as a whole. Um, yeah, if you want to go to the next one, um, and so so maybe I kind of like to think of of where we are today. We're at roughly 90, 90 million in TVL in real world assets. So a few other protocols um, that are are also bringing real world assets on. But but what what we what so what's the next milestone? I think it's it's right like scaling that number to a billion. Why to a billion? Um, well, it's the next round number that I can think of. But also, um, I think we're we're really um, doing here something now at a scale where uh, the real world will start to listen and say, okay, well, like if they can actually do a billion dollars in real world assets, it's probably like pretty good. Like this stuff actually maybe works. And that will mean that more borrowers and more lenders will look at it and say, well, like instead of going to a bank, maybe I can do this in DeFi, right? And maybe actually someone who today would say, oh, crypto is way too risky and it's volatile. And like, it's, I don't want to buy these crazy tokens that go up and down 50% every day. Um, they'll say, well, but maybe if there's like assets like real estate in crypto, I'll start instead of buying a real estate fund through Charles Schwab or Bank of America or, or like Robinhood on my phone, right? I might say, okay, well, actually, maybe I'll, I'll start looking at allocating some of my savings into into DeFi and saying okay like me I'll get I'll be able to get this uh exposure in 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 DeFi so kind of like as we think of okay like what's the next step in this vision we need to show that um we can scale this infrastructure and we can actually provide a viable alternative and that's where I think like the kind of like billion dollar like like next goal post for us is um is kind of like a a thing to think about and with the likes of block tower that are like working with maker right like with uh with other, with like more and more of these like larger issuers i think we're actually getting to a point where we can where as a protocol we can probably think of like hopefully soon if not not this year probably but um but in in the near future right well let, let's think of like what is really the infrastructure that we need to build to be able to support that TBL? And how do we get there? How do we how do we enable these users to use it? Um, I think, is there maybe one more slide? Yeah, um, and so how do we get there, um, right? Like kind of like we we published some some ideas around the roadmap and kind of like brought, brought sort of like new development ideas and features to the community that we want to discuss and sort of start implementing some of those and, and this there's a forum post on this um, on this roadmap that um, maybe uh, I can pull up a link later and share but um, really I think there are four themes that that we can focus on and I'd, I'd, I'd love to start discussing with the community that um, we how we want to uh, develop uh, in those four areas and those four areas are right like we want to scale pools on centrifuge we need to find more liquidity and that will come from DeFi protocols but maybe also other but also other investors um, we need to real world assets are incredibly met like hard to understand so we need to like find a way that we can make them easier to understand and therefore increasing trust in them um, and then also of course as we're building this around centrifuge um, it, now, sending future network can actually only work if if uh, if the token in it has more utility and actually can be used to enable all of these use cases. Um, and so maybe um, it's going to so coming to the end of kind of like sharing a bit of the 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 vision for centrifuge, um, I'd say let's looking we're very much looking forward to hearing everyone's contributions to 
like what I just shared, talking about how do we explain these things, what are we looking for in the future, but also like more concretely, um, what are the the features, the different themes we're working on that uh, you maybe have thoughts to and you want to contribute to and on the on the governance forum. Thank you very much, Lucas, for sharing that with us. I, I definitely believe that it is an achievable goal. And as a math teacher, I can appreciate round numbers. So I agree, 1 billion definitely sounds good. So I was just wondering, do you have any uh, expectation to as to when we will get there? And do you see any obstacles on the way to get there? You you asking me if I have expectations or obstacles to get to a billion? Oof. I mean, yeah, many we're we're working on them. Um, I think right the the what we what centrifuge is is it's a protocol to bring real world assets on chain. But bringing real world assets on chain means actually there needs to be a lender and a borrower. And um, if there's a mismatch. Uh, if there's like a lender that has that wants to invest in real estate, but there's only borrower that maybe wants to borrow against a car loan or again for a car with a car for a car borrow money for a car, well then like that that doesn't work, right? The other also like if there's a so, so like how do you so actually as we're building standard future protocol, right? Uh, it's very important that actually the the users that we bring on chain, right? That we the users that centrifuge that, that use centrifuge, there's actually a very clear match. And I think that's like right, like one of the reasons why we're we're thinking about the pop process, why we're doing so much work with DeFi protocols like Maker, um, is because, well, like we need to make sure that actually for every borrower that wants to use centrifuge, there's a lender. Um, and and I think that's like probably like one of the the main things we can, we need to do to ensure that like we can grow fast, right? Because if, if like lenders grow, but there's not enough borrowers, then like like you're you're not going to be able to grow either because the lenders can actually use the product. The other way around, right? There's an imbalance. It it kind of like doesn't work. So I think maybe that's that's one of the the things that I that I think a lot about when I think of senior futures. Like you need to find these um, like market equilibriums, right? Where like you you're kind of like balance going from like one balanced state to like the next one. We need to do that in sync. Yeah, makes sense. Thank you for that. And um, yeah, what about you guys uh, in the chat? You are listening. What do you think about this vision? Do you think it's achievable? And what are your thoughts on it? I'm curious to hear what you guys think. And remember what I said in the beginning, there are no stupid questions or comments. This is a governance call and everyone's voice is welcome. Yeah, I think I, I indeed what Lucas says is uh, correct. Uh, one thing, the, the, the trust in crypto, I think that's most main problem that people, uh, they, they need to trust it's, full proof uh, I don't know how to overcome this feeling uh, from the investors I think that's the main issue all, also uh, before they can invest uh, knowing that their money is safe uh, and that's, I think that that's one of the major uh, topics uh, to overcome I think coming days to coming years that's an interesting uh, thought. Do you have any ideas of like what initiatives could be made to make it more, um, to create more trust in crypto? What are your? Yeah, uh, yeah. Actually, the 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 persons investing and and the and the results they are getting uh, trust they are uh, spread, spreading the word. Actually, that's the only option I can think of. But it's it's very hard just telling it's safe. It's that doesn't work. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, think, I think that I think there are lots of people at the moment, like Lucas, say, uh, having money at the bank uh, with with almost zero uh, interest, and even knowing you get five percent uh, profit, they will do it. But they need to have this trust. It's safe. At least the money you put is safe. Uh, not that you don't earn that much five percent, six percent, but the feeling you you need to have 
what I want, I can get my money back. And, and due to this whole crypto uh, label on this, and this is very negative, of course, uh, all the media we hear uh, fluctuating uh, volatile prices and uh, getting to zero uh, coins, etc. Yeah, I think one, I think one thing I want to say here is that like, like, right, like there's, there's kind of like DeFi protocols that have been managing credit risk um, in De for DeFi assets for a while, right? Like Compound, for example, has to make sure that anyone that uses Compound uh, is comfortable with, with the risk of the protocol and believes that, that if they lend to it, they'll get their money back, right? Um, that, that it's not just going to disappear because maybe Compound shows some very risky parameters. I think, right, like, so, so what, what we need to do in, in Centrifuge is we need to kind of like build, maybe build out more, more no knowledge about real world assets and maybe also as, as a community, um, uh, like, like start thinking of how do we do this in, in centrifuge? And that could mean that like a protocol like compound kind of like discusses and audits and kind of looks at the risk in, in, in these, in, in the, these DeFi native tokens they have, well, we need to get, a, build a group of experts, right? And I think that was one of the ideas that, that Mike had and, and pushed for it is the credit group, right? That can actually start taking some of this, um, taking on some of this role of, of um, providing these tools, providing the advice to the community, the feedback on, on like how, how safe are these assets and why, they're, why they actually are safe and why the, the return is, is a good return um, that you're making. And I think that that maybe is a, a good a good next step. Yeah, I think, and also uh, earlier also said, uh, if if there kind of a kind of an insurance around there uh, around this process, that will be also very helpful. I mean, uh, if they have a feeling, okay, I don't need ten percent, but five percent is also enough. But as long as it is secured, uh, uh, I, I understand. The security insurance companies are not willing to secure this uh, or very high costs, but that would help, I think, to attract a lot of people if they have a feeling uh, it's uh, when something goes wrong, I can get my money back feeling. All right. It seems like there are a couple of questions in the chat as well. Um, there is a question from Sherry Lee. Would you like to say it out loud or uh, you want to clarify that? Ask that. Hi, everyone. This is Sherry from Seastar. Um, so we are a single family rental uh, investors as a manager. And we posted a pop recently on the Centrifuge Forum. Um, so for the next step, we just uh, came over and learn more from you guys and trying to understand better. Um, so for the current pool, we have $90 million of TL TLV. Um, what type of lenders on Centrifuge currently? Are there more retail investors or uh, more institutional investors? And uh, I'm trying to understand what motivated those institutional investors who has big money and uh, bring you know money on the chain instead of you know direct lending in the real world. So what is the benefit and more on this chain um, rather than doing in the real world? That's the number, uh, you know, the the question number one. Um, number two will be, you know, for centrifuge this platform, um, what kind of role do you usually provide to? Um, I'm assuming that you guys are a bridge between the lenders and the borrowers and bring, you know, the real world assets on chain and providing attractive returns and stable returns to the stable coin owners. Um, and, uh, you know, what, what is the, I understand your goal is, uh, you know, trying to grow this platform and uh, fix the broken financial system. Um, how do you identify like what kind of risk is behind the projects if the investor is able to get a return uh, that that et cetera in, uh, questions? Anyone uh, care to reply to 
to that? Is there anyone? There's a few questions in there. Sure. Yeah, there were sure. a couple. I, I believe the first one was like, what, uh, why would institutional investors go on chain instead of going through traditional finance? Am I right? Uh, yeah, the first question is, are there more retail or more institutional investors? All right. The second that's, question is, why institution going on chain? Okay, let's take the yeah, one at a time. Are there more institutional or retail investors? Anyone can provide some clarity about that. Uh, I can jump in with some thoughts there. I mean, I think historically, um, at Centrifuge, the majority of investors that have come through the Centrifuge protocol have been retail. But I think as we look to the future and in line with the story that Lucas was narrating, um, I think the future uh, is more heavily institutional. Um, I think that's a, the, to the second question, I think the question of why institutional lenders will come on chain um, is still a value proposition that's being developed. Um, in theory, right, what you want to see or, or where we're focused today is trying to figure out who are the groups that are already on chain, right? Who are those institutional groups uh, that are already on chain that are looking to diversify um, their investments away from being um, uh, crypto correlated, right? So uh, I think for institutions that have been on chain that have gotten um, exposed to the volatility and the ups and downs of the um, crypto markets, uh, I think the real world asset movement uh, centrifuge just being a piece of that um, is providing an opportunity for them to uh, have a more diversified and more stable return um, depending on their investment mandate. Thank you for jumping in, Colin. And uh, there was still uh, one more question, but uh, we still have a couple of things on the agenda. So um, if we would need to move on to the next point and then um, we might come back to them if there is time, but there are still a couple of things we need to cover. So now that you are here, Colin, if uh, you don't mind taking us through V2 of the pub. I think you're muted. Thank you. Um, yeah, so I wanted to spend a, a little bit of time talking about the pool onboarding proposal. Um, the pop has been up for probably about um, maybe four to five months at this point in time. Um, and some of the, I, I think we've seen, um, you know, C-Star, the team there just mentioned that they've gone through the pool onboarding process um, or have at least begun it, um, proposal process. And so we've seen nine different um, POPs come to Centrifuge over the past couple of months. I think there's been a couple of key learnings, um, and I'll just highlight two of them, which I think we were just discussing a moment ago. Um, I think the first learning has been that when it comes to how the community wants to engage with POPs, um in the right process and the right framework for how to do that i don't think we've perfected that yet i think we have an opportunity to improve that together as a community so i think that's kind of the first piece whereas um meaning specifically that um for the size of the center uh the size of the centrifuge community versus the amount of engagement that we've seen um i think there's there's room to improve um and i'll talk about how i think we may be able to improve that together um in a bit uh, but I think the other learning is is really what CSTAR just mentioned, right? Which is for um, any issuer or any originator that wants to finance, ass finance assets through Centrifuge, right? There is this, a little bit of this chicken and the egg problem where they're coming to Centrifuge um, with the expectation of financing assets, but understanding what available capital looks like or what the lenders look like on chain that can actually finance these pools, that's still a bit opaque. Uh, and so I think there's work to do, um, at least in kind of the education and the marketing um, and the awareness side of where Centrifuge sits in the overall RWA ecosystem on chain, uh, the role we play, um, and then also how um, and, you know, what is the right pathway um, for issuers or um, groups from traditional finance to come on chain 
uh, and finance assets for the first time. Um, so those are kind of two, I think, of the the, the key learnings that are are coming out of the kind of the first version of the pop. I had a call recently with some of the ambassadors to take some of their feedback who have been involved in this process so far. Um, and I think that was a first um, a good first step. However, I think there's an opportunity to engage our community more broadly um, on what the next version of the pop will look like. Um, and so over the past couple of months, obviously I, the ambas uh, some ambassadors and others have been looking closely at trying to think about and just kind of watching how the process is going and trying to figure out where we can improve. Um, and so what I'd like to do is I'd actually like to host a workshop um, that the whole community will be invited to in early October, uh, where we can take broader input uh, on the pool onboarding proposal um, and what the next version will look like. Um, and the hope is that through that workshop and through coming months together, um, we can get to something that goes, um, you know, through a a second version and goes through the community and goes through governance um, to find something that um, is suitable and really takes input um, from everyone inside of the inside of the community. So I think those are kind of next steps, what we've learned so far. Um, and then we can start to, um, at that workshop, actually detail more specifically what the next version or a version two would look like of the POP. Um, and really take uh, deeper feedback from anyone on this call and anyone in the centrifuge community. So I'll pause there to see if there's any questions or comments. Any questions or comments? Thanks, Colleen. Uh, when do you wanna host the uh, workshop? Because we're um, going to want to be there. <laughs> probably in the, probably about two or three weeks is what I'm thinking, Sherry. Okay. We'll Great. send you an invitation, Sherry. Yep. Thank and you. anyone else on the call that's like, I want to be there, just plus put your, a symbol in the chat. And yeah, there'll be a lot of um, forum posts and maybe even some surveys happening around this theme. And uh, see, like Sebastian has a question. You wanna you wanna ask that uh, yourself, sir. Or I can ask it uh, for you. Maybe you didn't hear me. Sebastian is asking, um, wouldn't it be possible to stake CFG token and finance pools with Treasury if needed and pay out in stables? Any thoughts on that? Anyone? No. I mean, I'll jump in with a comment. I mean, I think it's, I think the answer is probably yes, it's possible. Um, but I don't think it's the ideal state of one, I think it's probably a short-term solution, um, but two, I don't think it's um, kind of the ideal state of how Centrifuge wants to play um, over the long term, but also how we see ourselves um, as infrastructure, um, allowing for real-world assets to come on chain. Um, I think that puts us a little bit too much in the line of fire from an investment perspective. So I think it's probably, yes, possible. Um, but maybe not aligned to the long-term vision or long-term scalable uh, to the numbers that we want to get to over time. That's my take. Thank you, Colin. Any other questions related to POP or POP V2, the process, the pool onboarding? Hi, uh, hi this is Sherrigan. Uh, so I just want to continue the question, like uh, since the institutions are more, you know, to be the major lenders on the board on, on chain. And uh, when we talk to institutions, for example, insurance companies and traditional lending banks, um, when we talk to them, what's, what's your suggestion to bring up centrifuge? Like um, this is a, a value add and beneficial to you guys to be on chain. 
and to pitch them and work with us on centrifuge. I think that's um, a great conversation for the workshop. Um, I don't. I, I don't know if there's blanket statements, right? I think it's really hard. I, I, I will say this, you know, I've been at the Digital Asset Summit in New York all week. And I I have found through my conversations with other types of companies in the in the crypto space that convincing very traditional institutions to come on chain for the first time, uh, no matter what service or protocol you're providing or what you're building, um, is very very difficult. Um, and so I think um, I think it's very specific to the group that you're talking to and how they're thinking about the growth of the blockchain and the both the growth of the crypto space more broadly. Um, I don't think it's something where there is like a simple one, two, three, ABC type um, line of reasoning or logic uh, that makes them see simply um, kind of the value of investing uh, through or into a pool through the centrifuge protocol. Um, but I think that's something that we, that may be a great outcome going into uh, maybe an outcome of the workshop, right? And, and kind of thinking about how that could be crafted um, for pools that do want to use centrifuge uh, to bring assets on chain. Hi, Sherry, this is Brian Maloney here from Harbor. Um, Maybe I can share a little bit of um, insight there. Um, I think I think what Colin said is right. Um, more traditional investors are not familiar um, with this ecosystem. Um, but I think when we think about institutional investors um, that are that are you know looking to or that we're targeting to invest in these pools, they tend to be more like crypto native institutional investors. Um, I think that's really the, the low hanging fruit as opposed to bringing traditional investors over the fence. Um, at least that that's my thoughts on it. Um, I have a, Colin, I have a follow-up question for you. Um, you're in this every day, all day. What do you, what do you think like the, the, I guess you could call it addressable market for like, more crypto native institutional players to invest in RWAs, right? Putting the traditional investors aside because it's more of a sort of narrow audience. Um, what do you, th if you had to guess? The TAM uh, for, for private structured credit on chain? Yeah. Brian, is that the question? Yeah. Well, from a, from a, from, from a, um, investor capacity, right? So looking at the larger institutional crypto players that may have, you know, a certain portion that they would be willing to allocate towards RWAs. Maybe it's a question that can be answered after some thought, but just kind of throwing it out there. No, it's a great answer question. today. <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, I, I actually think there's an, there's an interesting theme emerging from the community, right? Which is like a kind of an all hands on deck moment around how to bring more institutional capital on chain for private credit. So, um, you know, maybe that's me just wanting to hear that. But if that is what I'm hearing, that's uh, it's pretty. <laughs> it's a good question and, and related to Sherry's. I guess there's a couple of things that I'm, uh, you know, that I would think about. And this is at a personal level. I mean. There's everyone knows the, the you know the relationship and the partnership between Centrifuge and MakerDAO. So you have to think about stable coins as kind of your first um your first stop on that journey, Brian, in my opinion. The irony being that a stable coin um is not like a a bank or an institutional lender, right? And so most stable coins aren't going to be able to attribute their entire balance sheet or all their reserve assets. Um, so there's a ceiling on that. So the question is, where do you go next? Um, I think there's some interesting trends around portfolio management um, for Dow treasuries on chain, but I don't think that's, um, you know, you'd have to do the research yourself to kind of see the size of those treasuries or what percentage of them are holding stable coins or their, their interest in actually investing into real world assets. That's kind of an educational piece. 
Um, and I actually think kind of a bucket that perhaps is emerging um, is more of the centralized finance technology platforms that exist. So whether that be Coinbase or Circle um, or some of the other traditional names that are out there, um, I actually think there's a lot of capital sitting, I guess you would say that's off chain, um, but with crypto forward or crypto leaning um, financial technology platforms that are beginning to look for something outside of Bitcoin and Ethereum um, and want something, um, you know, that may be new, uh, new inside of decentralized finance, um, but not so different from maybe some of the things that they've seen traditionally over the past 50 or 60 years um, through investing off chain through, through TradFi. And um, the only point being on that third bucket, Brian, is that it brings us back to Sherry's point, right? Which is if you are using one of those centralized financial technology services, why are you interested in real world assets? Um, if you were able to, if you were able to access them, um, rather than just getting exposure to those uh, traditional private credit products uh, through your traditional channels, so um, that's my view. But um, I'd be curious to know your thoughts. Yeah, definitely. I think uh, definitely. I think uh, crypto centered institution are the direction that. I think uh, maybe we can uh, think about for the next steps and uh, we just uh, maybe need a little bit of learning curves to understand what the market looks like and what kind of players and what names are out there and trying to reach out and, uh, you know, see what happens. Brian, any thoughts from you? Thank you, Sherry. Well, the narrative that I've been telling here over the last couple of months is that um, a lot of the institutional players and even retail player, retail investors that are um, very crypto native um, and are accustomed to you know volatility in markets should be looking at more stable yields. And so I think the time is really right for allocation towards RWAs. Um, but I think even for the institutional players, it's more, somebody mentioned it, it's about the education, um, the what and why, right? I think timing is right. Cool. All right. Thank you both, Colin, Brian, and Sherry. And if uh, yeah, if you want to start a new topic on the forum and continue the conversation, feel free to do so. And as Colin mentioned, there will be a workshop next month where the community will be invited to come with input. And uh, I believe we can make a forum post, uh, right, Colin, where they can uh, where we can announce it and people can express their interest to participate would that be okay yeah absolutely i think um you know give me a couple of weeks and then i'll get something out there um to get everyone invited um as quickly as possible great sounds excellent all right now we still have a couple of things on the agenda uh we actually still have uh four more things on the agenda. So there is no, we might have to go through them very quickly and even maybe even skip some of them. But the good thing is that there are forum posts related to all of them. So in case we don't have time to cover them completely, there are more detailed explanations on the forum. So let's move on to the next topic which is the Tin Lake rewards. So they need to be renewed. So um, Ivan, will you take us through that briefly? Yes, thank you, Arkan. My name is Ivan, and a few days ago, I posted an RFC post about the Tin Lake rewards. Before I start to talk about the report, I would like to make a short summary of these numbers. After Tin Lake Tiver, almost 99 million uh, die. Total rewards that have been awarded until today, we are in Lake 
is 22 million 209,000 CFG and total rewards that uh, and the current rewards are available on the rewards wallet is just 440,000 CFG. So this is means that with actual TBL and team drop uh, asset origin rewards rate, this amount will be not, uh, this amount will be announced only for the next 24 days. The main goal of my proposal is to sustainable continue and regular work of Chinlink and remain responsive to any upcoming change in the external market condition. So this is the reason why the Team Lake, uh, uh, why team drop and asset originated trades remain unchanged. Proposal parameters allocate 1 uh, million and 800,000 CFG in the reward reward and keep the same reward rate for team drop and asset originated rewards. So Approximately uh, an additional meeting of 1.8 million CFG with actual reward rate and with actual TVL will cover on will cover Team Lake for upcoming next 100 days uh, from one side and will permit keeping inflation under 3% and remain responsive to any change for the sector amount condition for another side. Mm, that's that's all. Short summary, and this is the link for my proposal. Thank you, Ivan. So basically, we are keeping the same reward rate. That's what the proposal is to keep the same reward rate and just extend them for the next one hundred days. So there is nothing, any no, not any new parameters or any new numbers. We are just extending what we agreed on in the last proposal. So there is a request for comment going on on the forum right now. I believe it will run for one more day and then it will move on to a snapshot vote. So, and we will, uh, we will announce this on the forum. Ivan will announce it once it goes live and there is a post describing how to participate in snapshot votes. So, and if you have any comments to the proposal, feel free to do it on the forum. The links are several places in the chat now, I see. So you can't miss it. All right. Thank you very much, Ivan. And uh, right. we, there is a governance. I'll give you a brief, actually, I will send you the link here. There is a governance update. We don't have to spend too long on it because we have a couple of other things we need to go through as well. But there is a post here on the forum. It's made as a reply to this um, to this community call post, or governance call uh, post today. And it basically describes what governance activities there has been since our last call, which ones are ongoing and which ones are ahead of us on both Centrifuge and Altair. So just to go through them in headlines, on Centrifuge, since our last governance call, there was a proposal to integrate SubSquare as a user interface and that one passed and we have integrated. Then there, is a, there was another proposal to increase the transaction fees and implement the token burn and the poll for that proposal passed and it will be implemented with the next runtime upgrade on Centrifuge. So, oh, Han, shall I just share my screen so people can follow? Yes, please. Would you mind uh, actually, Kate? That would be great. It might be easier. Thank you. So I just mentioned the two first ones, uh, the proposal the, for SubSquare and the transaction fees. So what's going on right now on Centrifuge is there's the proposal for the Tim Lake rewards, which Ivan just talked about, and this is still in the request for common stage and we'll move on to a snapshot tomorrow. And then there's another proposal to mint the real world asset rewards on, uh, on Aave. And that is going to be a fixed amount again of 100,000 CFG, I believe, yeah, for the following 90 days. And then there is a council motion 
currently being voted on by the council to open the HRMP channels between Statement, Moonbeam, and Akala to support three different stable coins. So I believe this is still in the council and as soon as it has passed in the council, it will move to a referendum vote that the whole community can vote on with their tokens. So yes, we will keep you updated in this post that Kate is showing once we get there. So, and then the upcoming is gonna be the runtime upgrade to increase the fees and the token burn. And this will be initiated after the one on Altair. So it's currently ongoing on Altair and this post describes it in details what the different updates are in this runtime upgrade. And as soon as this one 1020 on Altair has been enacted, then the other one on Centrifuge will be initiated. And on Altair, since our last governance call, there was runtime upgrade 1018 passed and was enacted already. And yeah, that's the one it passed in back in August a month ago. And then there's the ongoing one. And I'm saying that it's being voted on by the council, but it is actually already done. So it has this is now a public referendum that all token holders can vote on. It's the one a little bit below uh, Kate. Thank you. Yes, that one. This one is now being voted on by the community. So if you can go and vote with your air tokens on this upgrade. So, and just to uh, one more thing to add to the um, upcoming upgrade on um, Centrifuge, the 1012, this will also allow collators to be onboarded on Centrifuge. So we are very close to onboard the first five collators on Centrifuge. So as I mentioned, this will happen after the one on Altair has been enacted. So, and thank you very much, Kate. That was a great help. So let's, um, as for the, speaking of the collators, I might as well just say a couple of words about that. Let me just find it here. So the first five collators have been selected and there will be a forum post either today or tomorrow with more details about it. But I can mention the first five collators on Centrifuge that have been selected and the criteria they have been selected with are like high error points, consistent uptime, no slashing events, previous experience running validators, and good reputation in general. And based on that, the following five have been chosen. Ryabina, Moonline, Stakecraft, Masternode24, and Validatrium. I hope I'm pronounce them correctly. So, but there will be a forum post with all of these details. I just wanted to give you the headlines. So once the runtime upgrade I mentioned on Centrifuge has been enacted, it will be possible to onboard these. So the governance process for it will be to first whitelist them and to add their add the five collators and their self-bond. This will be a council motion and there will be no referendum vote on this one. This will be a direct action from the council. But the next motion will be to actually onboard them and there will be a referendum vote for that. So exactly, basically exactly like it took place on Altair. So the governance process is gonna be the same. All right, I will not go deeper into that. Um, let me see here, what is left? There's only one thing left on the agenda, which is how we're gonna use SubSquare and OpenSquare. But we are already nearing towards the end and I don't want to... I think, Ohan, what might be a really good solution for this is that you could make a short video instead oh. of talking about it now. No pressure on me at all. <laughs> I like that. Yes, um, well, there are forum posts 
See, I'm already trying to get out. <laughs> no, there is a forum post describing it. I'll see if I can um, put together a video. I am not an expert in any way, but um, I'll figure out a way to clarify how it works. It's very intuitive how it works, but I will somehow create some instructions. So I think I... The, the other option is that it got like people start using it. And if there's questions, we answer them as they come up. Maybe it's not necessary to do all these resources, but we just wait to see how it goes for people using the tool. I think so, because there are already some resources available on the forum on how to use SubSquare and how snapshot voting is going to work. And, um, and as I said, it is very intuitive. That was one of the reasons we, we proposed to integrate SubSquare to make things easier and make it more clear. So it should, uh, it shouldn't yeah. require too much explanation, but yeah. Let's, uh, let's not make more work then. And we had some support from Greg, from Riabina there. Maybe we just go with the try it and see how it goes mode. Yes. Uh, yeah. All right. Any closing thoughts? Any questions to finish off this call? All right. Also, I was just going to ask um, if you also want to think that there's a governance topic that you would like to spend more time on, or even if it's not explicitly governance, it's more this development or, you know, market, what the market looks like, which we talked a bit about earlier. Um, let someone know, um, either myself or Han or Christian, who's one of the ambassadors that runs the community calls because we will be able to we spend time on the things that the community wants to spend time on so feel free to put forward your needs yes oh just a quick thing before i forget the po apps there are po apps for the i can see jeff is a uh, happy he was <laughs> i didn't forget so if you want a po app there are po apps for the attendees of this governance call, Ivan just posted the Google form that you have to go and submit, and then you will receive a poll app for this particular governance call. So this is something we give away after each governance call. So um, please do fill out the form if you wish to get one, and uh, I will remain good friends with Jeff. So thank you very much. All right, I guess we can uh, close off the call. Thank you for coming, everyone. And uh, we'll see you next month in our next call.